They're living inside of a world that is not real. They don't live in a real world. A lot of people live inside of the matrix completely. Your mentality is heavily linked to your reality. And the fact that most people have such weak mindsets comes from the fact that they have a weak life, a weak body, a weak social circle, a weak network, a weak bank account, a weak relationship. And then their mind is weak. Well, of course. Whereas if you had a group of soldiers around you, men who were dedicated, who would wow. ride or die with you, if you were strong, if your woman would never leave you no matter what because she idolizes you, then your mentality would be strong. Your mind would be strong by extension. So if someone comes to me and goes, I doubt myself, I usually look at them and go, yeah, I understand why. You're a little fat piece of sh You're stupid. Of course you do. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not be in good shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try, and you actually want it, and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're gonna get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist, I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out? Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. That's what you deserve, you're a fucking loser. Because if you actually wanted it, and you actually tried, you'd have it. You could have anything you want. Universe is super giving. You want a fucking Ferrari, you can have it. You want that bitch, you can have her. You can have anything you want on the planet. There's not a girl I look at that I want that I can't have. Not one. That's my reality. There's not a car I can't have. There's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have. At a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. If I feel extremely happy and excited, I'm going to use that as motivation or energy to do amazing things and do good and work hard. If I feel absolutely depressed and distraught, I'm going to use that as endless energy and motivation to do amazing things and work hard. It doesn't matter what you give me. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted transferred. and transferred. It doesn't matter what fuel you give me. If you give me diesel, petrol, kerosene, vodka, it doesn't matter what you put inside of my engine. Hard work is going to come out. Absolutely. Success. That's all I know how to do. Making the best move on the chessboard, regardless of how losing your position is, it's a life philosophy that most will never understand. Sometimes you look at your position on the board and you're fucked. But still, regardless of how fucked you are, there's still a best move. There's always a best move and a worst move, no matter how bad things are. Many people, when they get to a losing position, think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't have to make the best move anymore. I actually disagree. Maybe nine times out of 10, the best move won't save you, but that one time out of 10, the best move might be just enough to save your ass. And on a long enough time frame, if you play the game repeatedly, day after day, taking risks, always making the best move, regardless of whether you're winning or losing, it will compound into an upward spiral of never-ending success. You might end up somewhere near me. You might have dinner one day. You might stop being a brokey. You might stop being a loser. If your girl leaves you, the best move on the board, perhaps is to go to the gym, perhaps is to send her flowers, perhaps is to never text her again. But you should make the best move on the board regardless. Even if you don't want her back, you should still make the best move. You should always think that way. What move will give me the best possible strategic position? That's how you think. That's how I think. Best move on the board is how you should approach your life. Next time you're in a situation, you should sit and say, okay, this is a bad situation, I'm fucked. But what's the best move I could possibly make? What's the outcome I would like? What's the most likely move to give me that particular outcome? And you'd be surprised what some of them are. I had a guy email me the other day saying he lost his job. And he was the worst salesman. I said, well, then you deserve to lose your job. That's how sales works. It's, it's fearsome. He goes, well, I don't know. What should I do? I said, what's the best move on the board? He goes, well, I really want the sales job. I think I can get good at it. I said, well, then work for free. So do you have another job yet? He said, no. Okay, while you're applying for other jobs, instead of sitting around on your, on your ass at home, keep working for free for the company for two or three weeks and see if you can turn it around. And he tried that. And he couldn't because he's shit at sales. But the point is, if he would have sat at home doing nothing, 
It wouldn't have helped him. The best move on the board was to try and prove to his company that he's actually worth something. If he was worth something, in those two or three weeks, he might have turned it around and got his job back. He still got to apply for new jobs. He didn't lose anything. Let's move on the chessboard. That's how I want you to approach your life, ladies and gentlemen. It's the mental model in which you should apply to scenarios to deduce what is the best possible action. Because if you're always making the best move and very rarely making the worst move, it's pretty hard to lose. It's player versus player out here. The world is about winners and losers, and everyone is competing against each other. You are competing against me, I'm competing against you, you're competing against your friend. You, and you're competing against your enemies. You want a dollar, so does everyone else. You want that hot girl, so does everyone else. You want that house, so does everyone else. What's amazing is the things you want, the main reason you want them is because other people want them. So you can show off that you have it and they don't. It is competition. It's kind of like the age old adage, if a tiger is chasing 10 people, you don't have to be the fastest. You just have to be faster than the slowest guy because he's fucked.